Welcome to the Eric Avisar Show. It is the most wonderful time of the year. March Madness is back, and it is time to talk about the battle of the 11 seeds. Some really talented teams that you could say are lucky to make the field, but should still make for some really compelling basketball. In Dayton, Ohio, Temple taking on uh, Belmont on Tuesday, and really it should be a game in which Belmont deserves to be favored. They are the second most potent offense in Division I men's college basketball behind Gonzaga, averaging over 87 points a game. So the offensive firepower is really going to come from Rick Bird's boys. And, you know, Dylan Windler is an NBA pro player. He's a do-it-all guy, very dynamic offensively, but of course his main threat is from behind the three-point line, a huge reason why he averaged over 21 points uh, per game this season. You know, working alongside him in the backcourt will be Kevin McLean, who averaged uh, over 16 points a game and struggled a little bit in the, uh, you know, conference championship game against Murray State. But, uh, you know, Temple is really going to look to slow this game down. They're a team that really values the ball. You know, they tend to play a little bit slower. Uh, they're very good at turning the ball over uh, on defense, so they could cause some issues uh, for Belmont's high-flying offense. Now, uh, Nick Mazinski down low will be counted on to get buckets for the Bruins. And for Temple, offensively, they're going to lean uh, heavily on Shiz Alston, who averaged nearly 20 points per game. And, you know, running the show for that uh, squad will be Quinton Rose, a dynamic point guard who can get it done in so many different ways. You know, he averaged over 16 a game. So those will be the two main guys that uh, Temple's really going to rely on here. And the Owls will really be coming out with a major emotional uh, edge because, you know, legendary head coach Fran Dunphy has already announced that this is his swan song. He is going to be uh, retiring after this, and what a great career he has had. So you know that Temple is going to come out extra motivated to send him off the right way. They certainly don't want to see their season end uh, in Dayton, Ohio. But look, while Temple is going to try to slow the game down, it really seems like uh, Belmont has what it takes to win this game. They've never won uh, an NCAA tournament game before. This is certainly the best opportunity they've had. And, you know, even if they uh, uh, move on and win this game, a lot of people even like them to beat Maryland. But first things first, they have to beat Temple. It's no gimme. But I like Belmont in a close one to open things up in Dayton. Now, on Wednesday, you could say two more talented teams uh, albeit more inconsistent teams in a sense will be battling each other. St. John's facing Arizona State. The Johnnies certainly, you could say, backed into the tournament after finishing with an 8-10 conference record in the Big East, have lost four of their last five, including uh, an absolute shellacking to Marquette in the Big East tournament. But Shamori Pons is definitely the most talented player in this game, and uh, is certainly the top NBA prospect. You know, he's a great uh, scorer, you know, really reads the game well, has a great feel for the game, can certainly knock down big time shots. I mean, he's nicknamed Slick for a reason. And, you know, he's really going to have to play uh, a great game for St. John's to win this because Remy Martin on Arizona State and Lugens Dort are going to give the Johnnies all they can handle. You know, I was really impressed when I saw Martin play against St. John's last season uh, in the Staples Center in a game that Arizona State won. He's a fiery competitor, you know, um, explosive athlete, and averages over five assists a game. So he's going to certainly do a good job of setting up the Arizona State offense. Will the physically imposing Dort, you know, put up uh, his 16 points a game that he normally gets? Probably, you know, St. John's isn't the strongest team defensively. They're undersized. They struggle down low against bigger teams. You know, that really crushed them all season long. I think the guy who's honestly going to make the difference in this game either way will be Arizona forward Zylan Cheatham, who averaged over 10 rebounds a game this season. If he gets into foul trouble, that means great things for St. John's. That'll open up so many more scoring opportunities for the likes of Mustafa Heron, the Auburn transfer who averaged 15 points a game, former five-star uh, high school recruit, LJ Figueroa, 
former Juco All-American who has a mid-range game, certainly not afraid of getting to the basket and can knock down a big time three-point shot as well. And, you know, I think uh, another X factor in this game for the Johnnies will be Justin Simon. Big East Defensive Player of the Year, shut down Marcus Howard twice. We'll love to see how he matches up, most likely against Lugan Stort. And two legendary coaches going up against one another, Chris Mullen taking St. John's to the NCAA tournament for the first time in his fourth season, while Bobby Hurley has now led the Sun Devils into a first four matchup for the second year in a row. It's practically a coin flip game, not a clear favorite like Belmont over Temple, and so you could really go either way on this one. I think the difference in this game is Shimori Pons, slick, coming up huge in crunch time. So my picks to win the first four are Belmont advancing to take on Maryland, and then St. John's defeating Arizona State to take on Buffalo. Thank you so much for tuning in, and enjoy the tournament until your bracket bracket gets busted and then keep on enjoying it anyway because this is March.